Has mum seen it eight times, she I has. think. She's been to yes. every preview. That's right. She's working as an usherette at the Princess Theatre. <laughs> yeah, she time. doesn't have a laugh. She's madly in love with, uh, with Reg. <laughs> she is uh, madly in love with Tom. Madly in love with Tony Shelton. Yeah. Madly in love with Grant Pira, who you see there on the right, who's wonderful. But of course she goes home to that wonderful, wonderful theatrical genius you see now on stage. I guess you take what you can get. Yeah. It is a fabulous show, though, I have to say. Um, not just because you're involved in it. It's something that everybody should get along to see. The best it's ensemble I've ever worked with, well, ever and seen. And it lives up anyway. to every expectation, I think. Here's Lauren reporting from behind the scenes of The Producers. The Producers is a musical about, well, the making of a musical. So it's rather fitting that we get to take a sneak peek behind the scenes. But how did I get access here? Well, I just happen to know someone in the cast. It's the only kind of music that we hunt and our honeys love to say. It's here at the Princess Theatre that the producers is set to dazzle Melbourne audiences. And interestingly, this very building is where my contact started his broadcasting career at Radio 3XY back in the 50s. But today, Mel Brooks is the princess's latest tenant. Well, his musical, that is. And let me tell you, he's got quite a hit on his hands. The Producers is the most awarded show in Broadway history. All up, the Australian cast features 27 actors, including Reg Livermore as the producer Max Bialystok and Tom Berlinson as accountant Leo Bloom. We'll not Broadway ride on it here. So this is where Leo Bloom lives? Well, this is where Tom Burlinson makes the <laughs> transition into Leo Bloom, I guess, yeah. Now you play an accountant in the show. Do you have a mathematical mind? <laughs> not really. No, I, I don't. That is probably the only thing that Leo Bloom is good at, is, is figures. I think it's probably the only thing he's ever been good at. Tom Burlinson? Hmm. I saw him in Fallop. Good horse, but beat nothing Sherman. We have the thoroughbreds. Those horses are right. Boy, have I been taken. Reg, you play Max Bialystok. Tell us about the character. Well, Max Bialystok is a, a once um, celebrated Broadway director who is now on hard times. With the assistance of an accountant who comes to do his books, he devises a scheme to produce a show which is guaranteed to be a flop uh, in the hope that by doing a flop, you make more money, in fact, than you do by having a hit. Now, I believe this theatre holds very special memories for you. I did Betty Blockbuster Follies in 1975 and in 1976 well, here in Melbourne. In 1977 here, I did Wonder Woman. And I've always loved the Princess Theatre. How does it compare doing a one-man show to working with a huge cast like the producers? Well, I think to have company around is a fine thing. This is a, this is a great company of people, a fine company of people, uh, your father included. And uh, we're, ha we're having a good time. Rich Livermore, who oh, famous for his one-man shows. <laughs> the one man usually sat in uh, row E number seven. Flunk <laughs> it. Show your assets, let them know you're proud. I'm with the beautiful Chloe Dallymore, who plays Ulla. This is your biggest role to date. How are you feeling? Really excited, Lauren. It's so wonderful to be a part of this show. Now, I believe that you were dance captain of The Wizard of Oz. That's and right. your assistant was none other than my dad, Bert. Absolutely. That and must have been interesting. What an astounding assistant he is. I didn't realise that he actually had his own uh, balletic style, the uh, <laughs> new Tony technique. But, okay. uh, I thought he had two left feet, so... <laughs> oh, no. Hidden, hidden talent. <laughs> Happy ending will pep up your play. Tony Sheldon, you play the role of Roger Debris. Tell me, what has it been like working with the producer's director, Susan Stroman? Oh, very exciting indeed. She's been a hero of mine for, for some years. And uh, it's a very challenging role. It's uh, Roger Debris, renowned theatrical director, but also the worst director on Broadway. He loves glitz, glamour, and believes that everything on stage, forget drama, music, the musicals is, is the way to go. Keep it light, keep it bright, keep it gay. Now, theatre is well and truly in your blood, thanks to your mum, beautiful mum, Tony Lamond. Yeah. They're pretty big shoes to fill. Do you get a little bit nervous going into a musical like this? 
Oh, of course I do. Of course I do. It's the family business. This was one of those roles that my mother saw the show in New York and she came back and went, Roger Debris, you've got to play this part. So uh, if, if mum, mum knows best, I'm yes. doing it for her. Don't you hate that? Mum's I always know, know best. I know. <laughs> Tony Sheldon. I knew his mother. Mm, memories. <laughs> While the actors sparkle on stage, backstage a busy wardrobe team take care of the show's 404 costumes and 130 wigs. And lucky for me, wardrobe director Billy Roche is keen to let me play dress-ups. OK, Billy, what are you going to do to me? Well, firstly, we're going to pop on the sausage on your head, which is the variant sausage which is in the show, in Act 2, when all the girls come down as a big show girl. Gorgeous. Billy Roche, a very interesting man. <laughs> And so artistic. And now for one of the real life producers behind the producers, Mr. John Frost. This is the third show I've done with Bert. I know, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we have a lot of fun, and he's terrific. And I think the audience are going to be rather surprised when they see what he can do in this show. This has been a very interesting story. Thank you, Lauren, and thanks to Tonya, too. Is Tonya in the studio? Thank you, Tonya. Yes, you did us proud, and we really appreciate that. Tonya's in it. And, Patty, if you're watching, uh, the producers want the Bavarian sausage back. <laughs> now, uh, on GMA, here's Ed. Still cracking gags during the promotion of his musical, The Producers. I was so happy and so blessed with this incredible, incredibly talented company uh, at such low wages. <laughs> Mel Brooks wrote the script, music and lyrics to the show, a Broadway hit, and he's ensured it has everything you'd want, big names, big sets, big acts. Based on the original 1968 film, the musical is about a theatrical producer played by Reg Livermore. He and his accountant, adapted by Tom Burlinson, hatch a money-grabbing scam, ironically, to produce a Broadway flop. Will be on top. People can expect a great night's entertainment, and it doesn't pretend to be anything more than that. Bert Newton belts it out too and says it's been a dream to work on a Mel Brooks production. I think it's the best show that anyone could see in terms of laughter and music and feeling good. And not even a rude interruption could affect the charm or humour of this genius gentleman. This is a great cast. This is a great cast. Thank you very much. Right. Nice working with you. Keep in touch. Don't be strange. The Producers opens on Saturday and hopes to tour nationally. Mignon Henny, 10 News. And he's praised the Aussie production, hoping of course it will be just as successful as the Broadway show. It's one of the most successful Broadway shows ever and now the producers is set to take Melbourne by storm. Written and produced by Mel Brooks, critics say this theatre production is putting true comedy back on stage. The famous funny man's travelled all the way from New York to ensure Saturday's opening night goes off without a hitch. Every on-stage move's been choreographed to within a second of the original Broadway show. I'm very happy with the cast. I mean, they're dynamite. Brooks's humour first entered Australian lounge rooms through television shows like Get Smart. The producers proving equally successful, winning a record 12 Tony Awards. Mel Brooks proving he still loves to crack a gag. I saw the show last night and... Uh... I was kidding with them. I went upstage and I told them, you guys were surprisingly good. Tom Bellinson, Reg Livermore and Bert Newton lead the Australian cast treading the boards at Melbourne's Princess Theatre. And even they were a little starstruck after meeting Mel Brooks. And the fact that he's here 
have to see our production. It's a terrific bonus. If everything goes well, promoters hope the show will run for at least a year. Jonathan Creek, 7 News. Comic genius responsible for its success, Mel Brooks. What do you call a musical about another musical whose producers set out to make a flop that actually turns into a hit, which itself ends up the greatest success ever staged on Broadway? Pure showbiz. As an unscrupulous theatre producer who rips off little old ladies, Reg Livermore is set to wow crowds of all ages. You feel that you are really involved in something that matters to people. Three days before its Australian premiere, the six million dollar extravaganza that's captured unprecedented praise from audiences and critics is tipped to be a similar success down under. Relishing his effortless portrayal of a mad Nazi playwright, Bert Newton says the real joy is being in a show created by comic legend Mel Brooks. I think it's the sort of thing where you wouldn't dare to dream because uh, he's one of my heroes. And it seems the man who dreamt up humorous gems like Get Smart just can't stop wisecracking. I saw the show last night and uh, I was kidding with them. I went upstage and I told them you guys were surprisingly good. Wayne Dyer, National 9 News. That's the news for now. Enjoy your evening and good. with an unprecedented 12 Tony Awards. The musical comedy that produces is the biggest smash hit to land on Broadway in a very long time. Now, I've got to say, I saw it about two years ago in New York on Broadway. Absolutely sensational. I loved it. It's coming to Australia in a production that promises to be as extravagant and as outrageous. Well, this morning, we've been very, very lucky to get behind the scenes as the uh, production opening night, which happens on Saturday, Saturday night as they're rehearsing. Let's go to the Princess Theatre in Melbourne to see what is happening. Uh, knock, knock, knock. We're behind the scenes. I'm not sure. Knock. Hello. Is Hello. Well, look who it is. Carry on, please. Come in, will you? Hello. Well, it's just, it's just so lovely to see. Uh, am I, am I with Carmen? That's oh. exactly right. Oh. Welcome to my townhouse, Carrie Ann. You'll notice how elegant the townhouse is here. We're on the Upper East Side in New York. It's 1959. Living in rather an elegant townhouse, wouldn't you say? I would say the colors are beautiful. Soft furnishing done by yourself, of course, Carmen. Exactly. I decorate. I like to decorate once a week. We oh. just recently <laughs> decorated yesterday. And of Please course, come this way. Of course, you have so many friends with you. Well, we do. There's a, there's a lot of people living in the house here. We have designers and script writers and all sorts of uh, helpers. <laughs> Indeed. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Mm -hmm. uh, just excuse me for one moment, please, Carrie Ann. Uh, oh, Roger, we're not alone. Yes, Carmen. Uh, we have a guest. Carrie oh. Ann, welcome to our beautifully appointed... Roger Debris. Renowned theatrical director. It's oh. a pleasure to be here, Carrie Ann. Roger, it is just such a charm, such a delight. Thank you for uh, taking uh, this morning because you're only moments away from your opening night. Only moments, the most exciting part of a show, of any show, especially a big musical, is opening night. And we're looking forward to a warm hand on our opening. <laughs> we are. We'd, We'd love that. Like to sit down? Now, gentlemen, please, um, as I mentioned in the introduction, I was uh, so fortunate to have the opportunity to see the producers on Broadway, one of the funniest shows I've ever seen in my entire life. But uh, with your lovely cushion there, perhaps you could just, you know, broad brush the, uh, the script for us. Well, let's see. The Producers is basically a story about two uh, no hope of producers oh, or an Grant, unlikely wasn't that duo. your real voice? <laughs> I'm sorry, if I let you down. Oh, I'm so I'm just, sorry. I'm just, I'm just, I was so we, convincing. We, I can't I'm keep it up all day. No, I can't keep it up. <laughs> Grant Pirro, the magic of the theater, Tony Carrie. Sheldon. Wonderful <laughs> no, no to have fun. you both with us. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Carrie Ann. Um, the, look, the premise is great. It's, it's uh, a, a failed Broadway producer teams up with an accountant and they come up with a scheme to put on the worst Broadway production, um, get people into, to invest in it, hopefully it's a flop, and they keep 
the profits. They've overfinanced the show, yes. That's and of much course, the let's premise. go back to where it really all began Mel Brooks and that movie, and they've done the musical on Broadway. Uh, it, it is mm -hmm. very funny, and there's some classic, uh, classic numbers. Now, uh, what sort of sense, you know, especially you, Tony, um, not that you've been around for a while, but you've been around for a while, a bit like myself, what sort of sense of grandeur and excitement are you getting from this? Well, this truly is one of the, the big Broadway events of the last few years. As, as you probably know, it won every Tony Award going, 12 Tony Awards, which is a record mm -hmm. on Broadway. So uh, there's very much a sense of occasion in that we have the original Broadway production team putting this on, and uh, they have very much wanted us to, to be the real thing. This is very much the Broadway production that we are seeing out here. And uh, so our top talents have all been involved, um, and uh, it's been extremely glittering and exciting and very very hard work but very rewarding and I think it's a, lot it's of a bit naughty in places as well it's got some wicked humor it certainly does. Yes, Mel, Mel is, um, is, is known for his love of low comedy. Uh, he loves the odd pratfall. And uh, uh, so, uh, yes, it, it's, it's a real throwback to vaudeville. I think uh, there hasn't been a, a funny musical like this in about 40 years. Not since probably, now, Mel like, Brooks is also coming out um, to Australia for opening night, which is this Saturday at the Princess Theatre. Now, um, did you have the opportunity to audition for Mel originally for this part, Tony? Uh, no, uh, I didn't. I, I did a filmed audition initially mm -hmm. that, that got sent across the water to uh, to Mel, I assume. But uh, but I was very lucky. I met Mel when I was a kid because my auntie Helen Reddy was his next door neighbour, and uh, I went to a Christmas party at Mel Brooks and Anne Bancroft's house where she dressed up as Santa Claus and gave out all the presents. So I haven't <laughs> had the chance to tell this to Mel. So I can't wait to meet him and say I've been a guest in your house. How wonderful! <laughs> and of course, yes. overnight, night, uh, your mum Tony Lamond and. Uh, at Tony and Helen coming? Yes, yes, Tony and Helen are both coming. Our, our opening night is, is packed, in fact. There's barely a seat to be had. Uh, there is one seat. If I may just uh, escort you over here, Carrie ann uh, it's, the, the tickets are like hen's teeth for opening night. I know, I hope you're night. saving me one. Well, we are. There is a special seat here, which is always kept empty. It's uh, Federici's ghost's chair up there, a C26 in the dress circle. That's where the ghost of Federici uh, usually comes to the opening nights here at the Princess. You're most welcome to sit there um, if you're not a scaredy cat. <laughs> Never. Now, some of your other characters um, are joining us on stage because we are, we're delighted to get a little bit of a sneak preview. Would you like to have a look backstage, Kerry Ann? Oh, Would you please like to come do. And, and, and as you walk us back. Backstage, Tom Berlinson, of course, uh, is with you guys, and also Absolutely. the fantastic Bert Newton. Now, how's Bert? Give him my love. We certainly will give give. He's he's just wonderful. Be careful of the show. Yes, there is a step. Now, which character period. does uh, Bert play? In which uh, again, just uh, paint uh, Tom's role for us. Uh, Tom plays Leo Bloom, the unfortunate accountant who gets mixed up in this scheme, and, and Bert is playing Franz, the writer of Springtime for Hitler, which is the musical that Tony and I direct or put yes, on. Yes, that's right. Now, where uh, are you leading way? us, gentlemen? We're, we're, we're going to what's called the crossover, which is an area of mayhem during the show. <laughs> um, there's tons and tons of people doing costume changes in this area, uh, and it gets kind of hectic. I, I believe that... Ah! Ah! There's a beautiful girl here. Look beautiful. Oh, good day for day. <laughs> Chloe Dallymore, oh. Kerry Ann Kemp. Or better oh, known in the play as Ulla. That's right, that's right. Sorry, Kerry Ann, I just get so um, blown away with this wig on. I just go into all the speak. <laughs> well, I've got to say, it looks fantastic. Just paint, uh, paint your picture this morning for us. Sorry, what was with, that? With your role. Which is your role? I play Ulla, the uh, Swedish secretary to uh, Tom and Reg, to Max and Leo, mm -hmm. and uh, she arrives at the boys' office hoping to um, be one of their uh, chorus girls, mm -hmm. but she's arrived rather early for the auditions, but the boys are so keen to keep her on board that they create the role of secretary slash receptionist. But the only problem is she doesn't have a great uh, grasp of the English language, so she has a very thick Swedish accent and, and there's a bit of confusion on certain uh, certain words and so on. So it adds great fun to, well, the, what to fun. the show. Now, I, I wish, you know, chookers to everybody for Saturday night because it's going to be a very exciting uh, opening Thank night. You. Uh, 
uh, will be there. I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, fingers crossed we'll get a chance to talk to Mel Brooks. And, of course, the next night is Logie, so it's just a huge weekend. And uh, our show mornings will be bringing you uh, all the fun and entertainment from the whole weekend on the Monday morning. Fantastic. And before you go, Carrie ann we've just whipped up something a little special here. This is from one blonde to another. Um, we just thought that when, you, um, when you're here with us on Saturday, uh, that you might just like to share in the producer's experience. We have um, uh, a little wig made up specially for you. I'd love so, it. Uh, so you can wear it on the red carpet and feel part of the family. I'd, I'd just we, be we could give us some of the costumes too. Oh, if, um, oh yes. She could perhaps wear um, Would Chloe's, you like a eagle number? Chloe's eagle number. Oh, absolutely. Indeed. Perfect for me. Do you me. think that on the red carpet, Carrie Ann? It's pretty got, understated, got, isn't it? Do I have a pair of shoes to match that? <laughs> and I've got them on as we speak, Tony. You'd be proud of me. Oh, and the little costume. Do you have anything to match sure. this? <laughs> the lamb chop sleeves. I think anything anything in your wardrobe would match this. <laughs> There's so many colours. And Listen, of course, again, this beautiful blue number. Chookers for Saturday night. It will be sensational. Um, and I just urge Australia in the next few uh, weeks, months, years to support this wonderful uh, Australian production of The Producers. It is so clever and well written. And, uh, and uh, Tony, Grant, Chloe, thank you for your time. Don't forget from April 20, Princess Theatre in Melbourne. I look forward to seeing you Saturday night. Chookers. You too. Thanks, Thanks yeah. Gary. Bye. Morning, everyone. Great play. Great musical. Okay, shortly, the, uh, the perfect drink to make your... Uh... ...opened in Australia. He's also responsible for my favourite definition of comedy, which is this. Tragedy is when I cut my finger. Comedy is when you walk into an open sewer.